now that you understand the basics of auto layout, it's time to give it a try on your own. This time your challenge is to pause the video and try setting up auto layout on the about screen. To do this, you'll need to do three things. First, the background image should be pinned to all four sides of its parent view. Second, you should center the close button horizontally in the container and make it 20 points up from the bottom of the view. Third, you should set up the web view so its top left and right are 20 points from its parent view and also the bottom should be eight points away from the close button. I know you're still new to auto layout, so some of this may be confusing, but give it your best shot anyway, and if you get stuck, keep on watching for the solution. Good luck. Let's start with the first item in our to-do list, which is to pin the background image to the four sides of its parent view. To do that, I'll select that, just like we did in the previous video. Click on the button here, and click on all four of these arrows and set zero to all four edges and add four constraints. That one's pretty easy now that one's stretched. Okay, now for the close button, I want to center that horizontally in the container. So I'll click the alignment button right here and click horizontally in container and add new constraint. Now you notice things here, there's a blue layout guide right here showing me that it's centered, but there's also a red box around the button. That's a problem. The bars are supposed to all be blue. Red indicates that something's wrong with the constraints, which usually means there's just not enough of them. So the key thing to remember is this. For each view, there needs to be enough constraints so the auto layout can know its position and its size. So the close button already knows its own size. Remember we typed that in in the connections inspector over here. So we said the size is 47 and 37. But for its position, so far we've only said that it should be horizontally centered, but we've never told auto layout where it should be vertically centered. It doesn't know to put it at the top of the screen. It doesn't know whether to put it at the bottom of the screen and so on. So we have to add another constraint to say, where should it be horizontally? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it 20 points from the bottom. So right here, we go back to this and we click this and say 20 points from the bottom to add that one constraint. And look, now everything's blue, which indicates that it's looking good. Now you may notice another problem with auto layout. What if you accidentally drag this button over here you notice some weird things going on. Now we see some orange buttons. What this is saying is there's an orange little dotted box right here, which is where auto layout expects this button should be when you run the app, but previewing in the interface builder, you actually have it at a different position. And so there's a mismatch there. And usually a good practice is you wanna make whatever you have here in interface builder match what's actually gonna happen at runtime. And luckily there's an easy way to fix this. If you click this button down here called update frames, it'll move whatever you have in interface builder, which you can think of as your preview to what will actually happen when you run the app. And so now it's looking a lot better. Okay, so now let's deal with this about the author button. We're gonna add two constraints for that. We're going to pin it to the bottom left at 20 points away from each. Add those two constraints. Finally, we'll add the constraints to the web view. Click this button and set 20 on the top, the left and the right, and eight from the bottom. Now you might wonder, how did that work exactly? When I said eight from the bottom, maybe you expect it to be eight from the bottom of the screen. But remember when you're adding the constraints there, it's going to your nearest neighbor, spacing to nearest neighbor, it even says that right there. And you can check what the nearest neighbor is by clicking this drop down right here. And you can see that the nearest neighbor is detected as the close button when the distance is eight. If you wanted it to actually be eight from the bottom of the screen instead, you could click this down here and choose the bottom layout guide. Then you could change that to eight again and then add one constraint and now it's updated it down there. And what you see here is there's some red things going on. Auto layout isn't happy because what we've done here is we've added some conflicting constraints. First, we added one that said it should be eight from the bottom of the button, and then we added another one that said it should be eight from the bottom of the screen. So auto layout has no idea what to do. So we need to delete one of these constraints. So if you ever end up in this situation, here's how you can do that. Um, select the web view, and when you do that, over here in the size inspector, you can see all of the constraints you've set up, and it kind of explains in English what's happened. So the bottom space is eight away from the close button. It's also so there's one for the bottom space is equal to eight away. So you can look through these constraints and figure out which one you don't want. We actually don't want this one that I just added and it will select it over here in the sidebar. It's another way of viewing them. And then you can just tap delete to delete that constraint and it goes away. All right, that's it. Now let's build and run. If I go to the about screen, it's now properly sized. 